Welcome to Bella and Your Business. My name is Bella Vasta, your host, and today I have the dynamic uh, Ian Anderson Gray with me. Um, he is, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start. He's the founder of Serious Social, uh, a blog that's fo- focused on social media tools. He's an international speaker, a trainer, a teacher, a web developer, and a consultant. He has a passion for making the techno babble of social media marketing easy to understand. Can I get an amen, you guys? <laughs> Ian is the co-founder of Select Performers, a family-run web agency, as well as being a geek husband and a dad of two kids. Ian's also a professional singer, and he lives in Manchester, the United Kingdom. Welcome to the show. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me, Bella. It's great to be here. I have to say, I think you're the first singer I've ever had on the show. I'm going to put you on the spot. Would you mind singing a few bars for us? Oh, dear. I I just don't know where to start. Let me think. Uh, How about a folk song? Um, Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see you away, you rolling river. Will that do? That is so cool. <laughs> you are now <laughs> down in history as the first one who has ever sung on Bella in your uh, business. So thank you so much. Um, so go ahead and take a moment and fill in some of those gaps for us. Um, I, I kind of gave an overview of who you are, but how did you end up sitting here with me and being this international speaker and, and just web <laughs> extraordinaire? Well, yeah, it's, it's, I think we all have these kind of interesting stories. My background, when, when I was at school, I was definitely involved in music. Music was my passion, but I was also a bit of a geek. And it's quite cool these days because being a geek is actually a cool thing. Well, I'm not sure it was when I was at school. <laughs> but, but when I went to university, did music, uh, then I trained to be a professional singer here at a music college um, in Manchester. And when I left, I wanted to see if I could find a way to combine my passion for music and technology. I was doing singing and I was uh, doing a lot of teaching and singing, but I started to build websites. I I, uh, started a web agency with my dad who had retired at that time. And and we fast forward a few more years. It was about five or six years ago. I set up my uh, a blog just for a bit of fun on the side. (laughs) It always starts that way, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's kind of funny. You know, I had no idea. In fact, you know, people were talking to me, talking to me about monetize. You know, have you thought of, you know, how are you monetizing it? And I was thinking, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so and but the but because I was passionate about what I was writing about, I was writing about social media tools. And particularly my one of my passions is taking technology that is difficult for people to understand and making it easy for people to understand. Because I get frustrated when I see, so, you know, there's like documentation written by developers and it's like, it's just so difficult to understand. Yeah. So so I wrote all these blog posts that started to get a lot of traction. I wrote one on the, uh, the, the tool Hootsuite, which I, it was slightly controversial. It was reasons not to use it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I wrote a, a, a follow-up article on why you should use it. I was looking at the balance between the two. Yes. Uh, so, so yeah, I did I did that. And then, then I went to, I took the courage to get on a plane to San Diego, which is a long way from where I am in the UK. And I went to Social Media Marketing World, which is one of the biggest social media conferences in the world. Love that conference. I have yeah. like eight pet sitters going with me in 2018 and hopefully oh, cool. we'll be able to meet you. Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to that. So I went to that and that, ch- I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that changed my life uh, because through that, through this people I, I met at that conference, I had all these other opportunities. I started speaking at conferences. I ended up speaking the following year at Social Media Marketing World. and Incredible. It's, it's kind of interesting because my background as a performer, um, I feel that it was it, it kind of prepared me for the world of speaking. Uh, because the, when I got on, when I was just about to get on stage, I was thinking to myself, if, if I'm going to be truly honest with you, what on earth am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then suddenly I got on stage and everything clicked into place, and the the fear and the nerves turned into just the energy and, and getting in front of the audience and, and helping them. So, 
yeah, that was a really good experience. So, so, so that's kind of a bit of a bit of a history. There's probably other stuff I could mention, but that, that'll <laughs> we do <for> now. <laughs> no, I love that, and I can totally relate. And um, I do. I hope that we connect um, uh, this year. So, transitioning into social here, like, and when I say social, I mean like pick a platform. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, what do you think the common misconceptions are of social media? Well. I think the hint is in the title. I, I mean, I, I'm not being funny here, but we forget this. It's social media. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I, I encounter this problem all the time. In fact, it's a problem that I sometimes uh, fall into. And the fact that we can set everything up, we can save time, we can you know, get some social media tools out there. Um, and maybe as business owners as well, we, we're just so conscious. We want to get our message out there that we're just bombarding people with our message and forgetting that actually social media is about interacting with people, engaging with people, building relationships with people. Uh, and so it's something that we have to, I think all of us have to remind ourselves all the time that it's not a one-way communication machine. It's listening, it's engaging, it's building relationships with people. And right. that definitely changed my life when I did that. And uh, we all need to remind ourselves to continually do that. I love that. I think uh, uh, really what comes to mind while you're saying that is, the whole, the be social and brands or people, you know, they'll put something out there and people will let, they'll comment, right? But brands or people, they might like it, but they're not like, hey, thanks so much. Or thanks, what did you really find useful about it? Or like, you know, just start that conversation of engaging. We're all wanting all this engagement, yeah. but we're not actually showing that we want it. <laughs> it it's so true. And I, I, I can't remember who said that. It may have been Mark Schaefer uh, who, who love him. talked about this. He, he Yeah, he's he's a great guy. I love him, too. And, you know, the thing is, the whole idea of brands and businesses, uh, you know, actually, you know, if you go back hundreds of years to the kind of the medieval marketplace, businesses were people and we interacted with people. You'd buy your vegetables from, I don't know, this guy that you knew in the marketplace and you'd talk. Yeah. And then things you changed. Your and your cobbler and your, yeah. Exactly. Candlestick yeah, you'd, have maker. These <laughs> you'd have these conversations with these people. And then, you know, I don't know what happened. You know, it's the, it's the mass media. It's the kind of big business. And what social media does is it kind of brings back the people. So brand, you know, as brands, as businesses, we are now allowed to be people. Again, we are. We can interact with people, and people are yearning for that. Uh, you know, if you if you um, get a if you get a, a, a like a tweet, a reply to a tweet from a real person at a big brand, yeah, you feel, feel amazing, feel lovely. You know, they feel this warm feeling inside. So I think that's that's it's bringing the power back to the people, and I think that's really powerful. That is powerful. It is. It is. It's very. Um... Uh, um, it, it gives people that feeling that they're being listened to, that they're validated. That's the word I was yeah, looking for, yeah. you know? Um, so taking that a next step further in order to um, actually connect with people, I know that you're really big in Facebook Live. So let's uh, let, tell me some of your tips and tricks on that, on how we can keep, um, take the misconception out of social isn't social and be that candlestick maker, if you will, and have that be able to create opportunities to have that almost face to face conversation with people through Facebook Live. Yeah, I think Facebook Live is like a continuation of all these other platforms. You know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Twitter and mm -hmm. big fan of all these other networks. So you can have these kind of little conversations with people. Uh, but you know what Facebook Live does or, you know, any live video platform, it brings you flaws and all in front of your audience. It's you know, you can't hide because it's live. Yeah. Um, and, and the fact that it isn't always perfect, you know, I think we should strive for, is, you know, as, as much as we can to be professional. Mm -hmm. But it is still um, it is still going to be live. And it's good. It's going to show the human side. And people love that. Yeah. People get to know the real person. Uh, behind the brand. And and, you know, for businesses, this is great because you can you can show behind the scenes, you can you can give demonstrations, how to videos. And not only that, but people can ask you questions live and you can and people feel they've got direct access to you. That is hugely powerful. We haven't really had that. You know, yeah. if you go back, you know, say three or four years ago, 
uh, you would have to have very, very expensive technology to to get the kind of quality that we're getting today. But now you can just do it with a smartphone. Yeah. You know, it's, it's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. When you're say, you just said behind the scenes and it made me think of I've never actually thought of this before because, you know, a lot of our listeners, Ian, are pet sitters and dog walkers. And people show like, oh, I'm walking a dog and stuff like this. But what happens if maybe you were a lunchtime let out kind of pet sitter? So that means the parents are at work. The dog needs to relieve himself. And you're out in the backyard with the dog, which, you know, you don't have to worry about privacy concerns and stuff. And you could say, I wonder how long it's going to take for this dog to relieve himself. Why don't you watch with me today, you know? And especially if you like, I mean, you could almost turn it into some funny, like the person who guesses like the, the right amount of minutes wins a gift certificate at the, I mean, and then people yeah. are like checking out your site and like, okay, so yeah, you really do have to wait quite a while. Some dogs when they don't go and others do. And like, yeah. I, I video oh my gosh and it's just such a warm and fuzzy industry that most of our listeners are in it's just so easy um I had a great gal today she got on camera and you're so right there is perfection in the imperfections and I think people are so afraid of the imperfections that it holds them back so yes. oh you're so right you know <laughs> I'm, I I shouldn't admit this but I'm going to admit it that although I'm a huge advocate for live video and I love live video. I secretly <laughs> really struggle with it. It's, uh -huh. you know, and that is a good thing, you know, but this is going back to me as a, as a, as a singer, yes. I always dreaded getting on stage, but then as soon as I got there, I clicked, it clicked into place. So yes. actually if you're fearful of getting in front of the camera, that isn't a bad thing. It shows that you care, but then it's what you do with that. So you, you could give into that fear and and then never do it. So, yeah. but don't do that because you have a message. You have a message. You have an audience. People actually do want to see you. They actually like when things don't always go to plan. You know, we had a, I have a weekly show and my co-host has a cat who decided to jump on the table and knock over her webcam. Oh, it was, no. it was hilarious. <laughs> you know, it was one of my most popular ones. So, you know, <laughs> when things like that happen. It, it just, People think, oh, yeah, that happened to me the other day. You know, it, it's that it's that uh, I think it Humanizing. brings that empathy, mm -hmm. empathy and yeah, humanity to it. So. So, yeah, the fear is is going to be there. That's a good thing. But test it out first. You know, if you're on Facebook Live, get get your mobile device, go to your profile. Uh, a bit of a tip to, to begin with. And I did this a lot. Just go live to your profile, change the privacy settings to only me. And then the only person that's going to see that is you. <laughs> yes. Um, so do that. Look at and then watch it back afterwards. You will probably if you're like most people, you will probably hate looking at yourself. Yeah. But try to be constructive um, and and then do it again and then just keep working at it. it do a challenge. Do like, a I don't know, um, a seven day challenge to go live every day and you will get better at it. I love that. I don't know if you're like me, Ian. I'm actually wondering. I don't ever listen back to my podcasts or my yeah. Facebook Lives unless I'm putting my Facebook Live on like a boosted post or making like an advertisement out of it. I don't ever watch myself back because all I do is pick myself apart. <laughs> yeah. It, and it, yeah, uh, but actually I would urge you to to do it occasionally not all the time yeah and, and you will hate it but the, what, this is what I what I do or I, what I used to do when I was teaching singing I because when I got um somebody singing they would they were, and then I stopped them I said okay and then and then they would usually go oh yeah yeah that that wasn't any good I said sorry what what why did you say that who's the singing teacher here <laughs> and I said and I said to them look at home what I want you to do is the first thing that you need to say is what did I do right there? Yeah, the first thing you need good. to say is what did I do right? And then once you've 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 said that, then uh, then you can look at the what what you can do better. Because you know, it, as a teacher, if I just like went in with the negative stuff first, I I, I would be sacked. You know? <laughs> so so yeah, do do that first. Be constructive. But it is a good thing because I've noticed uh, when I did my first couple of lives. I had this tendency that I was looking away from the camera. If you're on your phone, 
you tend to look at yourself, mm -hmm. but your camera is slightly away. Right. So you'll notice with a lot of people when they do it live, it kind of looks like that they're looking away and yeah. you lose that connection if you do that. Totally. Uh, so, and, and it's the same if you're using a webcam. I actually, I, I'm a lot better than this now. I actually, but at one point I actually put, uh, I, this sounds so silly, but I <laughs> printed something out on a bit of paper with arrows and I put it behind my webcam. So I wasn't looking at myself or my or the per, the other person I was speaking to. I, I was looking at the webcam. So yeah. maybe something like that might help. I love because as you're saying that, right, we are recording this on Skype. And I have your little box that you're in right up underneath my webcam and not down in the <laughs> corner or like because I try to be very cognizant of that because this is going to end up on YouTube and Facebook one day. Um, those are great tips, Ian. I love them. I love them. Um, so what would be some, so that was actually a mistake that people are making on, on Facebook and how you can fix that. Um, any other tips or tricks about Facebook live that you would give people? Well, I think I'm not against being spontaneous and just going and doing a live that that's fun. There's a place for that, yeah. but I think you, I think it's also good to have a plan and a strategy with these things. So yeah. maybe, you know, and I think having, maybe you could come up with two or three points that you want to put across on a video. So it could be, maybe you've written a blog post. Mm -hmm. So you you might want to kind of take the three points from this blog post and and do your live on that. Yes. In terms of the structure, the, the this is another thing that I think works really well because when you go live, the first people that will watch you are not the live viewers because Facebook takes a time to to invite people. So it might be two or three, four, or even longer uh, minutes before people start to join. So the first people you should address are the replay viewers, the people that are watching later. So you you kind of got to imagine you're in a bit of a time machine here and you say do. and say, hey, thanks guys, thanks for watching the replay. In this video, we're going to be talking about da 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 da. And then you can start to welcome the the live viewers who will hopefully come in at this point. Uh, then get on with the show. Uh, and at the end, of course, like any any other form of of um, marketing, I suppose you have a call to action. You see, you tell people where when they can come back and see you again. Uh, so just treat it like like that. But at the end of it. It, remember, it, it will actually get posted to your Facebook pro, uh, Facebook page or profile. It will become a piece of evergreen content that you can that will hopefully live forever. So you can do so many things with that. You can embed that on your website. Right you back on that blog things. that you were just talking yeah. about, you know? Yeah. So you, there's so many things, you know, don't forget about it. Once it's gone live, you can you can keep putting uh you know getting people to to that live video you could repurpose it into you could write a blog post from it oh my goodness there's so many things you can there's do so, so many things. yeah i had a previous guest on that uh talked about the cope method and that was c-o-p-e uh create once post everywhere and Love i that. mean yeah it's so true it's so true i always tell people that too every time you do a blog you now have a facebook live Something else I love in Facebook Live is um, tell people exactly what you're going to tell them off the bat so that they're not sitting there waiting for you to figure it out. But I love that mind shift that you said, Ian, about when you start those lives, start talking to the replay people because all your live people are not going to show up. And the majority of the people that actually watch it, like 95% sometimes, are going to be the replay people. So yeah, yeah. The, the fear of going live in front of people, you're not even really that live. What you're doing is taking away the extra work of having to edit something that you shot on your camera yeah. and then upload it. You know, you're, you're, you're being a yeah. mean machine. Ian, so I love working or talking with you. Um, but I want to shift into your next, uh, area of expertise, which is the web development. But first we need a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. And I'm here with Ian and we are talking everything, uh, serious social. I mean, I guess that's pretty much sums it all up. I know that you're also um, a, a, you, a web guy. So I was wondering if you could kind of go into more about that. Um, a lot of pet sitters are looking for websites to be designed um, and to be developed. But I don't think we always say we need a website person. We don't ever really actually talk about the difference between a designer and a developer. So in your expertise, could you break that down for us? Well, yeah, I mean, think, think about your website like 
a house or you know a, a building you know you you need to you need to get it designed or you know by an architect uh and then you need to get somebody who's going to to build it to plumb it in to to, to get everything working and then you'll probably need to get it painted and decorated afterwards so it's the same with it with a with a website there needs to be the structure of the website, uh, it needs to be connected up to the the electricity and all this kind of stuff. So, uh, but then it also needs to to look beautiful. So there are many different aspects to building a website, and that can also mean that there's you usually will be more than one person involved with that. You do find some companies or some people who can do everything, but most people will have their specialities. So you will probably need a web developer who will create the, you know, if it's say, for example, it's a WordPress website, they'll create the WordPress website, yes. they'll add in all the plugins, they'll add the structure, but you'll also have then the, the designer who will come up maybe with the branding, with the logo, with the colors. Yes. Um, quite often what I do, I, I'm probably more of a developer. I, well, I am more of a developer, but I quite will work with designers to take their design and put that onto the website. So while I will create the theme and the structure of the website. So that's quite often a, a, a way that that people work. Um, but of course, then there are other people. There are content, uh, you know, content writers. There's, um, if, you know, architect, user interface designers. I mean, we could go on. Right. There's loads and loads of people. So actually, when it comes to a website, there are a lot of things to to think about. And don't. Don't assume that one person can do everything. Yes. Um, I think that's what a lot of people are starting to learn these days because they get someone to design their website and it doesn't look pretty. Or maybe it looks really pretty, but it's not functional or like SEO'd right. Or, yeah. um, or they just try to do it themselves, which isn't always a bad thing if you have a background in it. Um, mm. So what do you think are some trends in websites? Because I see, you know, you look at a website and be like, oh, my God, that's so 1990s or that's so five years ago. So what kind of trends do you see happening in websites these days? Well, I think we've gone through so many different stages with with websites, you know, I and mean, I'm I'm I started building websites in I mean, really, the late 90s. I mean, uh -huh. my goodness, that that dates me. <laughs> um, but we're now at the situation where we've learned a lot. So, yes, the design is really important. Looking beautiful is a good thing. But actually, the functionality, the the conversion. So we're looking at websites to what do we want a website for? That is a really good question. Why do you need a website? What do you want it to do? Right. And ultimately, you know, for you, your, everyone's business will be different, um, but it, you will want it to convert somehow. You will want it to convert to your contact page, to yeah. to buying your products or, or, or whatever. And so the website needs to, to work that way. So I think I'm seeing more and more businesses getting wise to this and getting a website that will it's it may not look as beautiful as some other websites out there but it doesn't matter because it converts better right. it's simpler and that is a mis that's something that i've learned you know i've i've i think we all get probably overly excited by some websites that look really snazzy they they have all these special effects going on uh, but actually, if you do the research and you look at what works in the, in your industry, it can quite often be a simpler website um, because, you know, otherwise you, the visitors will go there and they'll just get distracted. You know, so that's not what you want. What I'm hearing is that all that glitters isn't gold. <laughs> you want to be really more concerned at like what, how your website's converting. And, and even these days, right, like mobile friendliness are... Um, and then all these different devices that we have, so responsiveness, and that your design adapts to whatever. It's almost going to be like a chameleon, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it has to be, you know, there's just no question. It has to be a responsive website, right? which is not a, so much of a big deal these days. You know, if yeah. you're going for, say, like WordPress or whatever it is, yeah. you know, most of the themes will be responsive. So, so um, I have to ask you this question, and I hope I can be articulate enough. As I was researching you, you know those tabs up on the top of the screen where it tells you the title of your website and the, there's the fa favicon, is it called? Yep. I noticed on yours, it's actually, I did a double take. I've never seen that title switch 
It says, I'm feeling lonely right now. Then it says, my <laughs> digital toolbox, 150. How did you do that? It's like magic. I've never oh, seen that before. Well, that's so cool. That it's I so need cool. a hug. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, was, it like, yeah. really made me pay attention to that tab on my on my screen. I know. It currently says on, on my website, says, don't, don't you love me anymore? <laughs> it's, um, it's kind of like showing my sense of humor. So yeah, it's just, I mean, because I, I love, I love technology. So it's, it's a bit of code that okay. I, and uh, I kind of, Was it I something got a bit I of, said? <laughs> it just yeah. popped up, sorry. It's just a bit of code that will do it. So actually it's something that you can, you know, you can add to just any WordPress website. Um, I should probably make it into a plugin actually. And, and, because uh, uh, it's, it's basically when you go away from the, the tab, it just, it just kind of like, hopefully, in a, not in an in an annoying way. No. It just says, "Hey, I'm here." You know, come back to me. Especially uh, because of like the little. It's not like continuing on your title for the page. It's like I need a hug. Like, what, excuse me, what? <laughs> <laughs> Fancy a cup of tea? That's the next one. I'm just going through all of them. I just, it's a great way to get your bounce rate like down yeah. too. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Ian, you are just such a wealth of information. Can you let our listeners know how they can contact you or maybe even cyberstalk you? <laughs> yeah, so you, I mean, my website is iag.me. So that's, that stands for Ian Anderson Gray. That's where I blog. I blog about social media tools, live video. You can also get me on, on Twitter at iag.me. That's iag.dotme. Uh, and yeah, just on my blog, I've got loads, loads of resources. I've got some courses on live video and, uh, yeah, just say hello. You know, you remember what is, when we talked about at the beginning about the social part of social media, yeah. uh, I love uh, when I connect with people. So please do, do do that. Super. And for anyone wanting to check out any of his courses, you could use Bella 20 for 20% off. Thank you for that. That was very gracious of you. Uh, for everyone listening, the best way to tell us that you liked this episode is to comment and tell Ian how awesome he is, um, to also like and subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher, and share it out with all your friends and family. You guys remember to always keep jumping. <laughs>